here. It's good. Okay. Uh, so Jim Kwaikawa, U.S. Geological Survey, is Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Uh, Fisher 8 is still very active. Uh, fountains, of, fountains are up to 180 feet, uh, but also as low as below the rim of the cone, which is about 115 feet above its base. Um, uh, we had, uh, we, we're just ramping up. There was an explosive eruption this morning, uh, of course, at uh, just before five o'clock. Seismicity is ramping up for the next one. Um, Hard to say exactly when that'll be because it's become uh, a bit more variable than normal. Um, we also have some new information about the subsidence of the summit crater. Um, parts of it appear to be moving towards the crater and subsiding rather rapidly. Um, the north rim of what was formerly uh, Halemaumau, the old Halemaumau crater, has dropped as much as uh, 40 yards vertically and moved uh, towards Holy Mountain. So it, it looks like it's sort of slumping in um, along with the piece that was slumping in from the west earlier. Um, let's see. So lava is, just to jump around a little bit, uh, lava is flowing through the channel. It hasn't, uh, it's, it's fairly full, but it hasn't spilled over today, as far as we know. Um, goes into the ocean entry, which is uh, simply a point uh, entry right now. It's got a fairly large upwelling offshore, directly offshore of the entry. Um, some minor activity on Fisher 16 and 18 still. And I think that's it. Any questions? Jim, can you explain upwelling for folks, especially those who are interested in going out on the lava boat tours who wonder if that's like an inherent additional risk or hazard that they need to be aware of and plan accordingly for? Um, additional risk, you mean to the being out there in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the upwelling, is, we think, is due to lava, lava flowing on the ocean floor. And so it's hot in a relatively cool medium. Uh, we think it probably sets up a convection cell right over the lava flow and uh, you know when you're out there you can see this patch of relatively calm water that's uh, somewhat circular or elliptical uh, right at the moment it's splitting the uh, the issuance of colored water if you will the uh, the stuff that has uh, you know the fine black sand particles in it uh, and it's uh, the uh, upwelling is right offshore there are two very distinct uh, colored patches of water that are flowing off the entry around it. Um, is it a greater risk? Uh, it's, it's a little bit cooler than the, the patches of water around it. Um, it's not a huge uh, circulation thing, you know, so um, it probably won't affect boats, but I'm, I'm not a boat person, so I can't really say that. Thank you. Could Anything you, else? Could you kind of go over again the rim of Halimamao and how, the, how that's being reshaped and, and what the significance of that is. The significance or, of it? Or, you know, you know, I don't know. Any observations about that, but can you explain it again? Which side and how much it's kind of shifting and falling? Okay, well, we're <coughs> we've been talking about the <coughs> substance of the summit for quite some time. It's been going on for weeks. Um, it appears to be um, accentuated by the explosive eruptions, uh, but in general there's a background of uh, the crater is collapsing. The edges are coming in a little bit, the floor is uh, subsiding, parts of it subsiding rather rapidly. Uh, the 100 to 120 feet or so, 40 yards of subsidence is of the north rim and is probably of a block that's moving towards the the big uh, puka inside Halibaba, the big hole. Uh, that hole is about a thousand feet deep uh, from the rim of Halibaba, but Hale, the rim of Halibaba itself is probably deeper than it was uh, pre-event. Um, so it's, it's sort of a massive collapse. It's, um, I would say that's pretty significant.
Then on top of that, there are these multiple uh, explosive events. There have been uh, 22 so far. Um, they seem to be settling into somewhat of a pattern, but I hesitate to say that because that's the death knell of patterns usually. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, is so. it conceivable that it all could become, you know, that the puka could just become the whole thing, you know? Well, right like now the, the collapse is uh, consuming the edges of Halibaba itself, while the floor of Holy Baba is progressively dropping in. Uh, so about half, roughly half of Holy Baba has, the floor of Holy Baba has, has fallen into the crater. The western remnant part seems to be sliding into that hole. <coughs> and now it, it seems clear that the north part is also sliding into, the, into that general vicinity. So this is a major uh, landscape change, if you will. And uh, it'll be changed for significant change to the, the greater Kilo, uh, Kilauea caldera um, floor adjacent to Hale Ma'u Ma as yes. well. Yes, yes. And any immediate uh, potential impact to uh, Jagger and to the HVO headquarters that sit right on the edge there? Um, well, HVO building has been affected by this uh, general subsidence. I, I'm not sure about Jagger. Uh, Jagger Museum. <coughs> I know that there has been cracking on the overlook, uh, but that's about it. That's all I know. Not, not that that's all there is. But, but sure. Anything there, else? Yeah, there was talk this morning, I think it was this morning, about the uh, increased SO2 levels and what that might indicate uh, as far as uh, what we're seeing with this eruption. Well, the increase of uh, Increased SO2 emissions uh, in the lower east drift zone uh, is probably due to an increase in eruption rate. Um, the two kind of go hand in hand. The, um, it's, it's become a little bit clearer what's happening at the summit, and it appears that the overall emission rate in between explosive eruptions is a little bit lower than what it was pre-eruption, but that each explosive eruption uh, actually uh, during each explosive eruption, the emissions become higher for a brief time. So overall, it's it's a lot of SO2 coming out, and uh, it's in such a way that uh, trade winds kind of collect it all together as it goes around Nalehu and Pahala and Ocean View Estates and Kona, ultimately. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jim.